Ladies and gentlemen, they say good things come to those who wait. And I think we can all agree, Tan Lee versus Gary Tonin is a very good thing indeed. We've got the champ, we've got the challenger. Let's start with you, Tan. How have you been since we last saw you mentally, physically? You feeling ready for this one? Yeah, it's about time, huh? Uh, but yeah, feeling great. 100% uh, physically, mentally. Uh, Gary's going to get the best of me, and I hope I get the best of him, so... Gary, how have you been doing with this time waiting? Have you been sharpening? What have you done with this time? Yeah, man. Um, I mean, it kind of started off like just preparing for Thon. And then, <laughs> I mean, we've had over a year now. So uh, at this point, I mean, I've just been trying to get better as a whole uh, in MMA this entire time. Of course, the entire time um, preparing for Thon. Uh, but it's been, you know, it's one thing to have an eight-week fight camp to kind of get ready for an opponent. Um, once you have like a year long span, I mean, you got to start thinking, you know, bigger picture than that. So, um, I've been, I think I'm about as adequately prepared for a single fighter as I could possibly be, uh, with that amount of time. Um, and also just managed to gain some new skills and stuff like that, that, uh, I needed to add to my arsenal just all around as a fighter, you know? Tanya, this is your fight. First fight since 2020, when you beat Martin Nguyen, you had some injuries. Has this helped you in some ways kind of? rejuvenate a little bit and are you also thinking big picture now yeah absolutely i think um the the interesting thing about this matchup is you know gary's got a strong suit and that's on the other side of the coin is my strong suit so since the beginning of my career i've been trying to fill that gap as best as possible and and become a well-rounded fighter just like all of us are um and and gary's doing the same thing on the flip side of the coin so it's kind of a, a similar situation, right? Like obviously to make me better as a, a fighter as a whole, I've got to fill in some gaps that I feel that need to be as high as they need to be so I can be the best in the world. And that evens me out on the grappling side, the wrestling side, the cage wrestling side, things like that. But that also helps me in this fight versus Gary. So me as a whole being a, my ideal perfect fighter pushes me in that direction. And then matching up at the end of this guy pushes me in that same direction. So it kind of works out really well. Um, and I know it works on the same way on the flip side of the coin, just like Gary just said. So um, yeah, it's it's more time is, is the only negative thing is I haven't fought and gotten paid. But other than that, it's been excellent as far as skill building, camp, training, you know, film review, knowledge, all that good stuff. So you, you we do this because uh, we're martial artists and we love to train and we love the art. And my goal is to become the, the best fighter I could possibly be. So the more time is, is always, always good. Gary, for a guy who transitioned from jiu-jitsu to MMA, your striking has been damn impressive. You talked about in the past how when you prepare for a guy like Tan, you're actually, you end up, that skill set ends up building so much. So how pleased are you with your striking right now? Like how, how deadly has that become in this past year? Uh, man, I'm, I'm really happy with it. Uh, I feel about as confident as I've ever felt uh, in my striking. You know, um, the way that we started things off when I first started preparing for MMA was just kind of in the context of, okay, Gary, you have these skills, which are, you know, you're able to uh, take somebody down, you're able to submit them, right? These are the, these are the skills you already have, right? And uh, how are we going to best utilize that to win fights while still building new skills, right? Um, because if I just said to myself like, all right, we're just going to become like a pure striker, it'd be kind of crazy because it just was a, it was just something that I didn't have. It'd be like starting from scratch. So you kind of say to yourself, it's like, okay, well, let's see what we can do, what kind of tools we can use um, to learn how to use this striking to kind of get to what you're already good at. And the further along the journey that I go, um, it's less just about that. Of course, we still do that. Uh, it's less just about that and now more about precisely putting together the pieces of the puzzle involving striking. So um, it, it was an evolution from like, hey, bare minimum to win a fight um, to, you know, being at the most dangerous Gary Tonin that I can be. Tan, last time you guys did this, I believe Gary said that he envisioned a second round rear naked choke. Have you ruminated on that? What did you make of that prediction? And have you got a prediction of your own? No, I, I was really surprised that he thought he was going to uh, win the fight and submit me. No, I'm joking. Uh, now, obviously, I understand where where he's uh, aiming. Um, I like the prediction. Uh, obviously, we're trying to battle that and go on the opposite side of the coin. So I think we're going to go later into the fight. I think we're going to go fourth, early fifth, 
and um, I see me knocking them out. Gary, are you sticking with your prediction from last time? Uh, yeah, fairly. I, I think uh, I might have given like another prediction. Or you know, you get interviewed a million times, right? So I never know which one, you know, uh, which which I'm, which way I'm feeling that particular day. Um, but uh, yeah, somewhere around like second to third round. I, I will say this, you know, uh, in, we talk about like how much I've gotten the opportunity to tape study and uh, you know, vice versa, my opponent. Um, you know, the times that I've seen Thon struggle for a round he was able to come back immediately the next round. Um, so I don't see this as being like a situation where I dominate him for a round and then uh, he's just gassed and doesn't have anything left for me. Um, you know, so I think, you know, talking about maybe round three, four, you know, a little bit later might be a more accurate prediction than like a round two, you know what I mean? Unless, you know, you kind of get uh, surprise him with something um, and get through the defenses to get to the submission. Um, so yeah, I could see something like that. He's definitely a durable guy. It's such a fascinating clash. We talk so much about styles, but Tan, how important is that first round to you and downloading Gary's style and really, really understanding how he's going to approach the fight? Yeah, I think it's uh, important for every fighter. So, which means it's definitely going to be important for me. It's definitely going to be important for Gary. Um, just to get, try to get a track on my timing. I'm going to try to get a track on his timing, his movement. You know, he's got a different feel than I'm uh, used to seeing. Obviously, I've got a different feel than he's used to seeing. So, that's what round one is usually for, for the guys that are martial artists that don't walk in there and kind of throw caution to the wind and, and you know, try to try to go in there and just have a bang fest. Um, you know, he's a calculated dude. I'm a calculated dude. We're, we're, we've got good camps, smart guys helping us. We're relatively smart guys, I'd say myself. Uh, so it's going to be a, a chess match, right? We're going to have that back and forth, trying to measurement, timing, distance, all that good stuff. Um, I think that's always a good thing if you're that type of fighter. And then if you're the less skilled fighter, you're looking to kind of make it a little dirty, a little messy, a little brawly. Um, that's neither one of us, our uh, style, I'd say. Um, so you're going to see, I think, a little development in that first round, but it's important for both of us. Um, it's what we do with that information that's going to make a big difference, right? Obviously, I'm confident what I would do with that info. I know Gary's confident what he's going to do with that info, so that's why we're fighting because I think I'm going to do better, and he thinks he's going to do better. So I uh, obviously, I'm excited and interested to, to kind of let that play out. But it's cool to have that... Striker versus grappler, we're both on the opposite ends of the spectrum, and we're trying to mold that to the middle so we can bring that person into our realm and um, kind of get that opening, take advantage, capitalize. But it's not that traditional striker versus grappler old school matchup, which it has that, that old style versus style feel, but it's like a hybrid twist to it. It's, it's like, uh, like an upgraded armor suit for, for Iron Man or whatever. You've got... You know, he can grapple at the highest level, but the man can strike a little bit, you know, and I can strike at the highest level, but I can grapple a little bit. So it's going to be really interesting to to see this play out old school with a new twist on it. Sometimes you look forward to something so much and it doesn't deliver on your expectations. But in this case, Tan Lee fights don't go the distance. You know, you're a finisher. Gary's also a finisher. He's also undefeated. So, Gary, does this have the makings of a classic for you? Oh, yeah, of course, man. Um, I think that, uh, you know, like you mentioned with the whole striker versus grappler matchup, what's so interesting when you have a style versus style fight is that there's such an easy argument to be made in either direction for this person's going to get submitted or this person's going to get knocked out, right? And uh, it's, what makes it, it's what makes it so exciting. Um, you know, you can't really... It's hard to it's hard to really pin down when you got two guys that are relatively well rounded fighters and you've seen them fight a bunch. Um, you can usually have a pretty good idea. You're like, hey, that guy's he's better. This guy's better. You know. Um, but here it's like, oh well, he's better there. He's better there. You just have no idea. But um, yeah, I definitely think this fight is going to deliver uh, uh, on some level of excitement because you know on one side or the other somebody's getting surprised. You know, whoever thinks that. Uh, you know, um, I'm going to get knocked out or he's going to get submitted or whatever the case may be at the end of this fight. Like somebody's going to be very surprised by the result. Tan, we know that you train with Ryan Hall. How significant is it to have him to try and solve the Gary Tonin puzzle? Um, I don't know if I would word it that way, but I would definitely put a ton of uh, respect in that direction, a turn of uh, uh, 
knowledge gained from from that side of things because Ryan has been such a huge part in in my martial arts career and I've tried to compute you know, contribute to his as much as possible and try to have that symbiotic relationship there but we've been good friends for a while since we've been on the, the ultimate fighter together so it was uh it kind of worked out nice that he you know if you zoom in they don't grapple grapple similarly at all but if you zoom out enough they've got you know similar ideas and, and attacks and, and approaches i guess um because good approach is good approach good tactics is good tactics so the understanding of the martial art itself on the grappling side of things is something that's very important and ryan has helped me with so much he's helped me with my striking so much but yeah it's definitely a uh a huge advantage to have a buddy of mine that is also really 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 good um so it's 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 nice yeah it's you know the the i guess the responsibility doesn't fall on ryan to uh show me how to beat Gary, right? Because it just doesn't work like that. Uh, you know, my brother can tell you exactly how to beat me, but you, executing that in the cage is a, is, is a lot harder than the knowledge itself. So it, it falls on us, you know, it falls on Gary to build his striking. It falls on me to build my grappling. And can I do enough to win this fight? Can he do enough to win that fight? And, uh, you know, I think, yes. What about you, Gary, in terms of preparation, if you brought in anyone special to try and mimic Tan's style? Uh, yeah, I, you always try, you know, to the best of your ability. I have a very small training camp, so I usually, uh, regardless of, like, who I'm fighting or even if I'm, like, um, even if I'm not in camp, I'm usually having to bring guys in and out. Uh, Yu Ting Hong's my main training partner, uh, and he's been great. He's very got a very adaptable uh, style, uh, but I bring a, b a bunch of different guys in from New York. Um, Andre Feely has come down a few times, a very talented striker uh, in the UFC, uh, not particularly the same similar style to Thon, but uh, just a very uh, articulate, intelligent fighter who's, who's kind of able to break things down and has been able to help me, uh, you know, here and there. Um, I also have uh, uh, a guy named Nick Parazio who is like kind of just like a little karate style kind of uh, guy, uh, a little smaller than me, but bounces in and out really well, throws a lot of kicks, you know. So I've been, I have a few guys that have given me those looks, you know, and we've obviously all kind of sat down with John studied uh you know Thon's tape and just kind of tried to mimic to the best of our ability uh what that what we believe that kind of fight situation is going to look like uh regardless of the style of the of the particular fighter uh I even got an opportunity to uh spar once with Raymond Daniels uh he's down in um he's down in Texas now as well so uh that was pretty cool uh, got a nice uh spinning uh sidekick to the to the liver which was awesome during sparring so uh <laughs> Uh, some some sparring sessions better than others, but uh, yeah, man, we've, we, I've got I've had an opportunity to bring some people down that uh, you know mimic that kind of in and out uh, that darting kind of style, which is is cool. Um, of course, just like uh, Thon mentioned, it's it's never quite a perfect uh, replication of uh, of the person you're going to fight, but uh, yeah, we did our best, you know. Tom, when you look at that top five, is Gary the toughest opponent for you, or is it somebody else? I think it's different. Um, dangerous tough 100 percent. i think uh if i had to pick out of that five who to fight it's it's going to be gary first uh and we all know why he's very very dangerous he brings a uh specialty in there that i don't possess so it's awesome like i've talked about this with with you guys before is that the reason i do this sport is not just to become champion it's not to make a, a lot of money uh it's to be the best fighter i could possibly be and fight the biggest and baddest dudes this is a huge threat that is an obvious uh alert when you look at this matchup right so that's what wakes me up in the morning that's why i do this i want to fight the best guys if i could you know we joke about this i can use this this belt, you know, power for good or evil. I can use it to kind of coast and get as many wins and fights under my belt as possible and maybe build a little legacy or whatever and try to try to hang on to that and maybe some people will talk about me in the future. Or I can fight the biggest and baddest dudes and, and lose the belt this fight or next fight or the fight after that. I don't care. I'm trying to fight the best guys because I do this for me. I don't do this for anything else. And I think that's what makes me really, really dangerous. You got the belt, or Tan's got the belt, Gary. Do you see him as the best fighter in the division? Uh, yeah. So, it's it, a lot of what he said. It's it's tricky because you like with everybody with different skill sets, different tools, and like different dangers. Uh, I don't know. 
I, you know, there's just kind of different threats to deal with. Like, for example, you know, obviously I'd been looking at Martin for the longest time because he was the one holding the, uh, holding the title for so long. Um, and he's just got that dangerous, uh, you know, rear hand, that overhand. Right. And like, I mean, that's, that just puts your lights out. Right. So like, there's like a, uh, regardless, uh, you know, it's kind of like that, uh, I don't know that 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 idea that like at any moment if this one thing lands like it's just over is it's it's a kind of a crazy thing and this one thing that this person is really really good at right um, and like you know Thon just has different tools in his tool belt to make that happen right um, I think that I think that Thon is probably the most um, what would be the right word for this? I think he's probably the maybe the most intelligently put together fighter uh, in the division in terms of like his precision and the way that he's trying to set things up. Uh, I see other guys that are very that are skilled and they're tough and they have uh, a lot of dangerous tools, um, but this is a person who's who's I believe is very calculated and uh, sharp, understands what he's doing, has a, a high ring IQ or you know fight IQ, whatever the case may be. And uh, he's going to be reading me the entire fight. This is a person who's, who's paying attention to what's going on and changing as the fight is going on, measuring, doing all the things that he needs to do to, uh, to try to improve even as the fight is going. Not everybody has that ability. Not every fighter can do that. Some fighters, they go in and from round one, they're just as dangerous uh, as they would be in round four. I, I don't think that Thon is that kind of fighter. I think that he builds as the fight goes on uh, because I think he's very smart and I think he, he's thinking about what he's doing. Whereas some of these guys just go in with the raw materials that they already have and they're like, okay, we're just going to execute. And that's that, you know? Tung, there seems a level of respect there. Like you guys might be friends if you didn't have to fight each other. Uh, are you aware that maybe this is the start of, of, of some kind of rivalry that you might have to face each other again in the future. We talk about a classic. If we look at the division, this might come around again. Is that something that's crossed your mind? Um, honestly, I've focused more, and, and this might be a little cop-out, but I focus more on the other side of things. Uh, I get to go in there and knock him out Friday, or he gets in there and chokes me unconscious Friday, and then maybe later I reach out and we can go train together. But, uh, you know, I'm always looking to be the best version of myself, and I don't hold grudges for anything. And we're in there doing a job because we're both really good and dangerous mixed martial artists and martial artists in general. Um, but yeah, who knows? A rivalry? I don't know about that. Um, they usually don't do rematches on a finish, and this ain't going to decision, so y'all can figure that part out. <laughs> this is uh, something that I'm interested in for both of you. We've seen somebody like Rainier Derrida. He wants to make up for lost time. He wants to have a season. He's taking a grappling match. He wants to fight for three belts. Do you feel similarly that you want to make up for lost time? That you want to, do you have a plan for this year, Gary? Oh, um, interesting. Make up for lost time. I mean, I don't really feel, I don't know. I don't, you know, I, I'm, I'm 30 years old. I wouldn't say I'm necessarily young for this game, but I feel like I have a decent uh, career ahead of me, a decent amount of time, especially the way that I fight, I believe is an intelligent um, and safe way of fighting, you know, so long as I, as I keep my skills up and I'm, I'm doing the things that I need to do. I think I have a, a lengthy career ahead of me if I, if I so choose. Uh, I don't really feel like uh, time was lost, you know, per se. Uh, like I mentioned, like having a year to prepare for this and to just become a better fighter I was just used to become a better fighter, like I said. Yeah, would I want, do I want there to be a year or more between every fight that I have? No. I definitely would want to have, uh, you know, more fights. So, so in a way, uh, would I want to pick up the pace and start fighting more? Absolutely. Um, it's definitely something that I'm interested in um, because, you know, we don't have all the time in the world. Um, but I don't feel like I don't feel like it was a waste. You know, for example, uh, the amount of time that I've had to prepare in this way. Sometimes when um, sometimes when there's a layoff and there's not just a body in front of you, a body in front of you, somebody that you're preparing for, it's a little easier to more broadly skill build. Um, you know, I know it's a little different with this because kind of we, I did have a person in front of me, but it just, the date just kept getting moved. Right. So it's a little different. Um, but still, you know, I, I feel, uh, like just like a much better fighter. So, um, yeah, like yeah, I definitely want to get into it. There's also a, a competition in, in jujitsu ADCC. That's like a, you know, kind of like our Olympics um, that's coming up this year as well. So uh, if I could find a way to squeeze that in uh, to my MMA schedule, I'd like to do that. Um, so it, 
fighting comes first though, ultimately, especially, you know, uh, trying to fight for a championship belt at the point that I am in my career. Um, that's got to be priority number one. So we'll see if we can, uh, if we can win uh, two world titles, so both uh, grappling as well as uh, uh, mixed martial arts. Tan, right now, all bets are off. We've got submission grappling super fights. We've got mixed rules fight between DJ and Rod Tang. What's your big focus? You've spoken before about two divisions. What's your plan for the year? What's your, your ambition at the moment? Yeah, um, kind of piggybacking off of the, the lost time. I agree with Gary and, and the way he... He has his mindset wrapped around that. I like it a lot. Uh, I feel the same way. Um, I do want to stack some fights up back to back, though. I would like to get in there. Shit, if, if something happens and, and, you know, God willing, we get in there and get out of there unscathed and it happens to, to work out well for us. And uh, I'll stay in Singapore. We can send the next guy in and I'll knock him out, too. I want to uh, I want a quick turnaround on this next fight. Um, if it's possible, if, if I'm, you know, medically okay, physically okay, obviously. Um, and I want to rattle off a lot of fights. Uh, obviously, I'm not getting any younger. Gary's got some time. He's 30. I'm 36 now, um, which I, I feel like I'm 14 and up here. But, uh, you know, a lot of time to develop skills. And now it's time to, to execute on those and just rack these wins up, make a little bit of money. Obviously, that's always a, a good benefit. But, you know, getting these matchups against these really good guys, I have to take advantage of being at the top, not like – clout wise or anything like that but knowing that i'm going to get the best matchups every single time and and the ones i prefer and i don't shy away from the ones obviously the ones that are dangerous and the ones that could end uh my reign so i'm going to use this you know power for good and get these fights back to back to back try to rattle off as much as wins as possible um after that's you know in that skill you know like a uh, mindset i should say uh i'd like to move up to lot to lightweight I want to take a look at, you know, Christian, I've been eyeing him up for a really long time. He's a uh, extremely well-rounded, great fighter. Um, obviously, he lost the fight, which I don't know if I completely agree with that decision. That's got some some controversy behind it. But uh, Oak is a, an excellent fighter as well, very dangerous, as, as we saw. Um, so that's something that I want to do. I want to move up. I want to go get that belt from those guys, one of those guys, obviously. Um, have those two. I've explored the idea of trying to go down to, uh, to bantamweight, but that's not going to happen with, with my body structure and the where I'm at right now. But um, we need to, you know, I'm going to put it out there. We need to go and do these cross-promotion fights. We need to go find these other champions and bring their ass here, and we need to test who is the best fighters on the planet. We, we, we need to stop this, uh, you know, I've got my champ over here, you got your champ over here, but, you know, I, I think on paper this guy would win. Let's test that out. And if we need to do it without the, that one guy, that one organization that doesn't want to take part, we do it without them. We bring the rest of the champs in here. We do uh, uh, fights and we, we cancel out. We knock these guys off and we figure out who the best in the world is. And if they want to throw their name in the hat, then cool, so be it. But if not, we know who the best is and, and we're going to prove it. And I think one championship has that. Gentlemen, some fascinating points today. We cannot wait to see you back in the circle. Great to see you as ever. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, guys. Thank you.